but I need to be able to activate all the guns on my tackle slasher. All right, welcome guys. Thank uh, you. I just uh, I was looking at the nine days on power grid management. It's like, uh. Hey, Frey. Let me give the intro here. Um, right. uh, so I just started the stream. Shield upgrades three will will work. Uh, cool. I was muted, so Frey didn't know I asked her <laughs> to let me intro the uh, stream. So I just started the stream, and uh, so this is Fleet 101. This is a class uh, just to get you used to the lingo so the first time you're in a fleet, uh, hopefully you don't get left behind just by all the jargon that's in EVE. Um, so I'm Jinx Decare. I'm the co-director of the Brave Dojo, and um, hopefully the Brave Dojo has been able to support you guys if you're new to NullSec or Brave. And uh, so today, what I'm going to do is just go over really basic, uh, basic things that will give you a head start in in a fleet, and then we'll do some question and answer, and I'll talk a little bit about um, how you can help as a newbie in the the local war that uh, we've we're involved in right now. Uh, so everybody, go ahead and get on the undock, and we got 11 people in fleet. That's pretty good. Uh, I do have, uh, like I said on comms, I'm I'm open. Uh, because I'm streaming, and if that if it causes an audio issue or something, let me know, and I'll try to fix it. So if anyone doesn't have a, a ship, please go ahead and type that in fleet chat, and I can get you one. I'll just give everybody a minute here. Looks like I got three or so that are not on the undock yet. Go ahead and st uh, stop your ship, the control space. All right, so the first thing uh, that is really important is joining a fleet. So the fact that you're in this fleet, you know how to do that. So. Uh, if you joined by a link in chat, that's one way, but the other way is to use the fleet finder. So that is, if you go to the top left button, the uh, the E button, you go down to social and you select fleet and that brings up the fleet window. I always, I put the fleet on my my sidebar and oh, it's, you guys said echo, I thought it was echoing. Um, <laughs> and I can also, show you guys how to, how to find this. Uh, sure, Garrett, I will get you a ship. Uh, so once you have the fleet window open, you want to go ahead and go to the history tab. That's where all the broadcasts that the FC or fleet commander is going to give. And uh, you're going to want to have that this window up the entire fleet. So it's, it's really important. Um, one of the things that I like to do if you look at the lower right hand corner there's a pair of chevrons two arrows you want to make sure that that's up so that you can see the uh, the broadcasts and this is how these are the buttons to broadcast for shield and armor um, if you need to be repaired so everybody go ahead and press those I think I can see those and uh, later after the fleet we can talk about how to add a shortcut so you don't have to do it manually so there's needs backup, go ahead and press the shield one. That's the the need backup doesn't really get used. Oh you know what? I might have those broadcasts turned off. Let me see. Nope, I haven't. Maybe it's because I'm not undocked. I'll be out undocked in one second. So in the middle of a fleet, uh, it's best not to be spamming these, so we, we usually let the fleet commander use them. Um, you can see need shield here on mine. I don't know if you guys were doing that. Maybe because I was docked, I couldn't see yours. Um, yep, yeah, that looks good. Um, so this is where you can see commands. So the, the FC should be telling you commands, but then they're also linking them there. If you are in Logi, um, you're going to want to be able to see the shield broadcasts. If you are in 
um, DPS or that's the mainline doctrine like what if they call for Ferroxes that's the DPS ship or Caracols that's the DPS so you want to be a have broadcast target on if I'm in Logi or the Space Healers I actually turn broadcast target off so you can ignore that uh, first we're going to just talk about moving around though so the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to do it in a line so I'm going to ask all you guys to uh, see I'm going to broadcast to align to the reactor so when it's on grid, which means you can, your computer is rendering it, you can see it, you actually have to just go ahead and hit approach um, or align. To, on the fleet window, you can say align to, but on your overview, it should, if you're on the combat tab or the travel tab, it should uh, bring it to the top when I broadcast it. If, yeah, there you go. Yeah. And so then you can, if it's on grid, you have to hit approach though. So it, Whereas if I broadcast a gate, let me do this. So now I'm saying uh, align to three techo. Now now it would you would do align to. And notice I I said tack for the dash, and that's just a way that um, that we use. That's what we say on comms to to clarify that we mean uh, there's a dash in the name. Okay, so let's go back to the reactor. So everybody approach the reactor. So then I'm going to say, uh, yes, you, we'll say take this fleet warp. And if we're all aligned, then we'll all warp together. Uh, see, one person was not aligned. So because, yeah, because they were not aligned, they warp after us. And you can imagine on long warps, that or if you're in bigger ships like battleships then the fleet's going to get separated so then when we all land we're not landing all together so that could mess up the fight or you could be left behind you could get tackled and you could die so try to follow a lines and um and so then you can and so then you catch them and you don't get left behind and, and die now i'll admit in fleets i get left behind all the time but do your best to be paying attention to those in particular. All right, so let's. Uh, the other thing about uh, warping together is we all um, we follow the warp speed of the slowest ship in our fleet. So right now we have a destroyer with a dragoon, so we're warping at um, dragoon speed. And if he was a battleship, then we would warp much slower, in, or even a capital. So if you are in a ship that's much slower, the FC might ask you to uh, flag exempt from warp, and to do that, when you have your fleet window up, you go to the top left-hand corner, the hamburger menu that some people call it, and you say uh, flag exempt from fleet warp, and on my fleet, if you go over to the my fleet tab, you should be able to see that it's red. That's really most important if you're in a bigger ship. If you're in the mainline ship or a small ship, it's not, it's not important. So now I'm going to cancel that and do flag except from Fleet Warp. OK, so that's just the super basics of warping around. So let's just take a few. So I'm going to tell you to uh, align at the soda factory. And I'll say align, align, align. And I'm going to give the FC would give a few count. One, two, three. And you know, they might not count out loud, but they're going to count themselves. And then they're going to warp. So we got. We got a good number of people there, but we want to we'd want to get uh, much faster so that we could warp together. In small ships, small doctrines like uh, cormorants or um, towers or jackdaws, where we're trying to warp around the grid, which the grid is where we're fighting the battle, uh, we're gonna want to be really on point because we're gonna warp in, we're gonna try to uh, target the bad guys, kill a few, and then warp off. All right, so everybody go ahead and align to AX dot for me. Align, 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 and take this fleet warp. So when you're going to a gate, um, you always, you never want to say the J word. You don't want to say, do we jump? Because people don't, they might mistake you for the FC then they're going to jump. So always wait until the FC says the gate is green or uh, go ahead and take the gate or jump. So when you land on, on the gate, go ahead and take the gate. 
data screen. When you go through, SE might ask you to um, to hold your cloak, so just don't move. This gives the FC a chance to look what's going on in the system, uh, maybe do a D scan, or just they're often talking in other comms doing fleet coordination. So this gives them one minute where the fleet is not at risk and they can, um, and so j just don't double click in space or something that would move you. So everybody go ahead and break your cloak, which you can just double click to get your ship going. And then I want you to, well first let's add me to watch list. So in fleet chat, you can see my name. Go ahead and right click me and hit fleet add to watch list. Hi Garrett, um, make sure you're listening to me on the on Mumble and not on the uh, stream. So once you have me on watch list, uh, I'm going to ask you to anchor on me. What that means is you want to, uh, I, I use the left click hold a lot, but you want to keep it range 1000 for me or 500. The FC might say keep it range 500 or orbit 500. So uh, I, want, I want everybody should be in a little line doing follow the leader on Jinx. If, uh, if you're not behind me, then go ahead and put your prop mod on which would be a micro warp drive or an afterburner if you have one. Can someone link Garrett the mumble in, in fleet chat? I think he's listening on the stream. Um, okay, so now that we're all anchored up, this is, so the reason we anchor is so that we have, um, the FC knows everyone's, everyone's range from the enemy target. So you could imagine that the enemy would probably be in a small ball, uh, say at the gate. And we would, all, I would know that everyone's, because I'm 50 kilometers away from the gate, I would know that everyone's within 50 kilometers. So that might affect, I would know that most of the fleet is in the optimal damage range for our, our guns, not right now, but for um, hurricanes or something. And so then if I ask you to, to shoot somebody, then I know that um, that we're all going to apply, we're all going to hit them. Okay, everybody go ahead and align to this broadcast. Um, it's the AX dot jump bridge. If you if you don't have this one on your overview, which you should be on your combat overview, when we warp there, you're going to want to right click and, and say add to overview. You should be able to see it in space. Okay, take this cold warp. Well, actually, it's not a cold warp. I told you to align. So a cold warp is if I don't tell you to align, I could just warp you. I could just warp the whole fleet somewhere. And sometimes FCs say, sorry about this cold warp. And what they mean is if you get left behind. Sorry, but they're they're doing that as a an emergency. So this structure here, this is a a player jump bridge or jump gate. Go ahead and right click it and and scroll down below save location, and you should say add upwell jump gate from overview. If you don't have that on the overview, it's an easy way to get. We use these to get through our space quickly. It's an easy way to get lost in a fleet, so it's really important to have those on there. So everybody, go ahead and take the jump bridge. Yes, yeah, go to the Anciplex, yeah. Thank you. Okay, it looks like we got almost everyone. Uh, Garrett might have gotten left behind. Someone can convo him and, and help him out. I'd appreciate it. Um, all right, guys, go ahead and go ahead and, and anchor up on Jinx again. So break your cloak and anchor up. So everybody go ahead and put their uh, prop mods on.
So right now we're in tackle, but we're kind of pretending like we're in caracals or something bigger. So typically in tackle, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to hang out. We're not going to anchor on the FC like you're doing right now. So um, you would just you want to follow. You want to be near the fleet, but you you want to stay away from uh, the the enemy because you're a nice squishy target. So you're going to want to stay. You're going to follow FC, take all those warps, but then you're going to want to burn away from the enemy. And then at the end of battles, you can warp in at like Rex or other other things and try to catch somebody. So that's kind of what tackle does. That's what a condor is, is tackle. You're trying to tackle them, prevent them from going away. Also, if you're in E-War, which are also frigates, then you're not going to want to follow on anchor. You're going to want to try to stay at your maximum um, your optimal range or, or your maximum range because you don't want to be hurt. So like right, I'm showing right now my uh, tracking disruptor and I have a range of 97 kilometers. If I can stay within 66 kilometers then most DPS ships can't hit me and um, so I can with the E-War you'll be affecting the enemy but not, not be a risk yourself. So you in, in the small ships you end up flying yourself but today we're using them like bigger ships. Um, if you guys, some of you guys are getting a little bit far behind, so make sure that you uh, put your prop, that your prop mod is on the micro warp drive. Uh, put your micro warp drive off once you have caught up to me. All right, can I get, uh, can I get a plus one? I need somebody to scout into Increll for me. So if you want to be a plus one, just type plus one in Fleet for me. Okay, Boggle, you're my plus one, so the FC might ask you to do this in a small ship. Uh, what I want you to do is I want you to jump into Increll and take a D-scan uh, for me. And so what a D-scan, I'm going to link this. So what you do is you you Alt-D or go down to your scanners on, on and open it up. You scan the ships and then you can, if you're on the PVP tab or ships only tab, you can select all, you can control C them, you can copy them, and you put them in this website that I linked. We use intel.bravecollective.com slash dscan, and you copy paste it in there, and then it gives you a link with everything that was on the dscan, and you provide it just like Boggle did there. How do you select all? Uh, you can you can shift click all, or I think you can control A. All right, everybody take this fleet warp. If you don't want to take a fleet warp and you're in a big ship, like say for some reason everyone's about to go and you're like, oh shit, I have to dock up and go, you can control space and stop your ship. It's really hard in a quick ship like Tackle because you have to do it almost immediately, otherwise you're already in warp. So uh, what this D-Scan tool does is it gives me an idea of what's on the other side. This is even useful in standing fleet where you're like, hey, there's a ton of enemies then you can, if you do a D quick D-scan, provide the link, now everyone else knows exactly what you're seeing. Go ahead and take this gate. I want you guys to go ahead and set Desto or Destination to uh, 68 FT, so I'm going to provide you the uh, destination is in uh, is in Fleet Chat. FCs often call it uh, Desto or Set Destination or Set Desto. So you just right click on it and you hit Set Destination. It pulls up the autopilot, but you don't. Um, you're obviously not going to autopilot. You're going to pilot your own ship. So what this does is it highlights the route. Um, and we are not, just for this class, we're not going to take any jump bridges down there, so we're going to go to TMTAC. And what I want you guys to do is go ahead and free burn until we get to the YTAC-J gate. So what, what free, is free burn? Uh, I was going to get there. <laughs> the free burn means you're going to warp yourself, you're going to jump yourself, and you're just going to go at, um, as fast as you can. So we're not going to worry about keeping the fleet together. 
Um, and if you saw something, like say we went through a couple gates and you're like, hey, there's a giant enemy fleet here, then you should speak up in, uh, in fleet chat. Should we be bouncing off of planets or warping gate to gate? Um, usually if they're telling you to, um, if they're telling you to free burn, then that should mean that they have intelligence that it's fine. So for this case is just go gate to gate. All right. Yeah, the, the idea would be is that if someone got caught, we could reform together quickly and kill whoever caught us. Not that <laughs> there's been some times where free burns <laughs> split the fleet and things go poorly. <laughs> but that's on the FC, that's not on you. All right, so I want you guys to look at the, if you have Mumble up, which you should, uh, go ahead and, and look over there. I want to just talk about the different channels that uh, that there are. So right now we're in the Echo main channel. So this is the kind of lobby channel. And if you see the, my lips are red, which means I'm shouting. That means I'm shouting to every other channel in Echo fleet, which includes uh, the command wing, if you look way up in, in the fleet structure of Mumble. So if they're, the FC is usually going to be up there, so you can only talk to them if you're shouting like I am. Um, whereas you can whisper freely between each other now. Um, also, if you need it, so the logistics wing or Logi, Echo Logi, they're in a bigger fleet, they're going to be in their own separate wing. Sometimes Ewar Tackle can go down there. One nice feature is we have a quiet channel, which means that when you're in a fleet of 100 people, one person shitting up comms can make it a bad experience. So you can go down to the quiet channel and just listen to the FC, and it's a, it can be a better experience. But if you enjoy this perk, Echo Main is here for you. <laughs> yeah, go ahead and hold on the YTAC J gate. If you jump through, that's okay. If you're in YTAC J, can you X up in fleet for me? I right, want you guys. Where are we jumping right now? You are standing at Ypsilon Tag J gate. Yeah. Okay, everybody get into Y Tech J on the 4IV gate. So if you were in 4IV, jump into Y Tech J. If you, and everybody crash the gate, that's what crash the gate means, is just approach the gate so that we're all at zero at the gate. What this does is this gives the FC the option to, um, the option to have us all jump back in, or if he decides we could warp off, or we could engage a fleet. So crashing the gate is, is usually turning, I'm not doing it, but turning your micro warp drive on and getting to the gate as fast as you can. Okay, uh, so can I want, let me see, Noel, can you burn me attack? And what that means, I want you to get me a a tactical point 150 kilometers from the fleet so that I can warp to you if necessary. So go ahead and turn your, um, because you're in a small ship, you're fast, I, I could ask you to do this for me. Um, go ahead and turn your mic warp drive on and get it 150 kilometers from everybody in the fleet. Is anyone not with the fleet? I'm on my way. Okay. So when a FC calls for a free burn to a particular system, it's the gate before that system, or you can always ask to clarify. I, I did mean it. I meant the YTAC J gate. Um, you guys took the gate. It's usually okay. It's usually just to to split up the fleet. So is everybody here? Yes. Yep. Yep. All right. Uh, so just one little reminder when you're in fleet just try to say uh, you know Jinx isn't there yet or Jinx needs help uh, so talk about yourself in the third person so that we don't have to look over and, and mumble or, or rely on the overlay okay so Noel so you've made a tactical for me so one nice thing is you can do control B and um, and you can make a bookmark and you'll always have this tactical on this gate 
and you can see that I can use you. I can right click on you and warp the fleet. I'm being targeted. So now I can use you to warp. Now we can all do control B. We can name it tack. Now we all have a nice little tech, uh, tactical on the gate. So any engagement we have in this gate will have somewhere we can warp off to. So when you're when you're in a um, when you're in Ewar or you're in a Atron in a big fleet, if you're burning off, that gives the FC more options to warp around the grid. So that, that's a, a good idea, particularly if the the fleet is just sitting around. Um, in a back when we had really big Ewar wings, which we haven't had uh, as much recently, but with all you guys, we might have that. You could a good idea is to once the fight's going to happen, you want to like starburst the way. So you, what starburst means is you pick a random direction and you fly in that direction. So then we're not, like if we're all in griffins or we're all in molluses, we're not all at the same range and um, and we can hit the, the fleet from all different directions. And it gives, again, if we're at tacticals where they can, our fleet can warp to, it gives the FC a ton of options. Okay, let's go ahead and take this cold warp. So you guys, do you guys know what yellow boxing and red boxing means? No. No. Yeah. Okay, so uh, let's go, let's see if there's rats around. If I get anybody killed, I'm going to feel bad. But... Is everybody here? Okay, so what yellow boxing means is if you look on the overview, if you're on your combat tab, if you don't have the ZS in overview after the fleet, I can help you set that up. Uh, but when you're being yellow box, that means the enemy fleet, or you want it to be more than just one person, a bunch of people are trying to target you. So, you know, like if you're ratting and you're targeting the enemy, it takes a little while to lock. So um, not all of you guys will get targeted, but somebody now is going to be yellow boxed in our fleet. And so, and then quickly red box. Red box is when they've locked target, and that means you're about to be, or actually that means when they're shooting you. So yellow box means they're locking you when it's blinking, and then they have locked you. Red box is when they're shooting you. So um, boggle, I want you to, so what you would do if you were in a caracal, everybody should probably go fast. <laughs> so to put your micro warp drive on, orbit these guys, or warp off. So uh, boggle, you'll want to, um, broadcast for shield. As soon as you're yellow boxed, you want to be broadcasting. If you wait until you start taking damage, the, particularly how fleets are, are these days, you're going to die. Um, well, we don't have any Lodgy or Space Healers, but like right now I'm being red boxed by about half the uh, rats and they, uh, our healers would be able to heal us. So if you wait until you're red boxed, it's too late. So you, you need to um, you need to do it when you're yellow box. Now, if we're in a hurricane fleet and I'm flying tackle, our job, if if things are going crazy, if they're heavily engaged, which you're going to be able to tell by the FC yelling and and you know lots of other people broadcasting, don't broadcast when you're in tackle. Um, your your ship's worth 20 mil. The other ships are worth 100 mil. It's better if Logi's locking them up. Um, now, but if it's if it's a pretty calm flight fight, which you'll be able to tell, um, go ahead and broadcast. So now one nice thing is you see like when I broadcast here, it says Condor. Uh, a couple of years ago, it didn't actually say what kind of ship. So a good Logi pilot should be paying attention to that and picking and choosing who they, t they lock up. Okay, uh, everybody take this fleet warp. Did I kill anybody? And no one died. Good. <laughs> um, another important thing. So when I didn't really do it there, but w in the bigger ships, if you have your micro warp drive on and the FC told you to turn it off, and then I and then the FC fleet warps you, that because it, your maximum velocity is a lot more, it's going to take you longer to turn and warp off. So if the FC says turn your micro warp drive off. You need to do it, otherwise you might get left behind. 
Everybody take the gate. Take this cold warp. If you miss the warp, warp yourself to the H Tech 64 gate. So some um, some system names kind of sound like uh, words or look like words. Like near GE, there's oh shit, and hopefully that's clear. You can always ask in fleet chat or or in comms like which one. Um, I bet like H Tech 64 probably they might not sometimes they even skip the tack but just look for the closest thing in system if um, in the next one there will it will be not clear so take the gate when you land because in the next one there's 9i SRF and 9i I something else so I could I could say take the AFJ gate or but if I said the 9i gate it would probably be a good idea to ask which one. <laughs> Here I will broadcast the line. Last one, you Ah, thank you. Free range chickens. We should be okay, we're fast. All right, someone, someone warped without me. Uh, that was me. Sorry, I pressed the wrong button. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, so, like, my autopilot says the 9-tech I, but I know I just prefer going through 9-I SRF because that's brave space. So it's important, even though um, it's important to watch your broadcast, which I didn't broadcast, and I warped you guys without aligning myself, uh, which you get to make fun of me for. So that's called FC bingo. Um, when if FC screws up, then you get to make fun of them nicely. Yeah. Uh, so we were talking about watch lists earlier. I had you watch list the FC. That's always a good idea. Sometimes there's a secondary, which means if I die, then you're gonna the secondary FC will take over, and so you'll have them. The FC at the beginning of fleet will ask for snowflakes. And what that means is for the logistics of space healers, go ahead and take the gate. And um, snowflakes are usually more expensive ships or more critical ships like Dictors or um, Hugens, Recons, things that were are really blingy and really important if they die. So if you're in Tackle or you war you're not a snowflake. <laughs> uh, or if you're in DPS, you're not a snowflake either. So that's for the logistics wing to know if they're on the watch list, you only can put 15 people on. Those people are more likely to get uh, repped. Go ahead and align to 68FT. Three, two, one, take this fleet board. Oh, thank you, Drug Free, for uh, broadcasting for me. I thought I did. That's okay too. It is good to wait for the FC to uh, to mess it up, though. <laughs> um, I'm slightly falling behind. I jumped to the wrong gate. That's okay. Just meet us in 68 FT. All right. Yeah, that was the autopilot. Take the gate, take the gate. All right, have you guys been to impasse, by the way? Mm-hmm. I live here. All right. That's good. Uh, so this is a wreck fleet. They're probably chasing somebody. So maybe we'll maybe we'll tackle somebody for them. Hurricane camping. So everybody, go ahead and uh, take this fleet warp. Uh, where are you now? Uh, we're in 68 FT. We're on the Ansiplex. You can once you're in here. Um, yep, I'm next to the gate to nine. Okay. IBL. 
Uh, so um, warp to jinx. So I did X's in fleet, which normally means um, I'm tackled. Or, uh, so warp to me, but you might do W's. That's like a say warp to me. I'm close. All right, so now that we're all here, um, does anyone want to leave a jump clone in PZMA that doesn't have one? Um, is it? Oh, uh, well, yeah, sure. I'm gonna leave one there. Okay, well, we'll go into PZMA, and then um, I'll talk. Well, I answer some questions, talk a little bit about the war, and um, then I'll stop the stream. And we, we'll fly back together if you guys want. All right. Okay. Go ahead and hold your cloak. Um, oh, take the gate. Yes, yeah, take the gate. Sorry. So let's see, I think the only thing I didn't do, go ahead and warp to Jinx if you uh, did not get that fleet warp or at the Keepstar. The only thing I didn't do is uh, show broadcast targets. So I can um, I can broadcast targets and the FC wants you to do it in the order that they tag them. So please don't shoot our friends here. But if I broadcast three targets, I want you to lock up all three, but then you don't start shooting unless I tell you that. So this is when you're more in DPS. Um, you're gonna start, I might say lock up all three because we want them, hopefully they'll start repping number one and then I say shoot number three. And then that'll give us a chance to kill that person. So it's really important to, uh, he might say lock up these three, he might say fire on lock, which means just as soon as you lock somebody, go ahead and just start firing on them. And different fleets, Depending on what they're flying, it's going to be different. Um, so I think I gave you guys a pretty good intro. Um, yep. If you any particular question, anyone been in a fleet that they got lost or something? Yeah, uh, but not uh, regarding to the fleet. I mean, uh, I've installed a jump clone, but how do I move between clones? Uh, I'll help you after the after the fleet for that. Um, so another one that I after the fleet. I'll link a how to take a Titan bridge. So if you haven't done that, I, we have a short video on the YouTube. Almost everyone misses their first Titan bridge. So if it happens for you, then um, just don't worry about it, it happens to everybody. What you, you have to do is usually they'll be on a keep star or on a fort. You'll be told to approach the, the Titan. You need to be within 1000 of it. So just like you can approach me, you can say keep it range at 1000. And then they're going to say, uh, bridge is up, or, or or jump through. And you right click on the Titan, which is a really big ship. And you right click and say, activate, activate gate. Uh, if, so they have to go to a Sino ship, which is how they open a portal in space and, you know, crazy Eve stuff. And if that ship on the other end dies, the jump, the, the jump bridge goes down. So it's really important that the entire fleet tries to get through it once. So as soon as you hear, take the jump bridge, go ahead and take it. And I'll, I'll link the video after the fleet. Okay, um, anyone have questions? Otherwise I'll talk really briefly about the war and then... Yes, I have. Sure, go for it. Sure. Uh, question one, uh, how do I set up this scan so I can see only enemies? Okay. Uh, so we go down to our scanner or Alt D, and if you're using the mouse, it's in it's right next to the capacitor. It looks like a little radar. You go, you press it, then it's the one on the right, um, and then you go up to the. So everybody have it open? Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, then go up to the upper right, and it should have, um, so it should say filtered none, or it should say all or zero filtered, something like that. Yes. So click there, sc scroll down, and then you should be able to say uh, ships only or uh, PVX basic. So that, that'll also show NPCs and MTUs and things like that. But I, I 
a lot of times I do ships only. Thank you. Second question, I was part of the fleet yep. and yeah. I was second tackle. And uh, the first, the the first scram, mm -hmm. uh, he mm -hmm. never said his name, so I never uh, knew. Like uh, they were telling, okay, second tackle, second tackle, and I'm like, uh, who are you? I like, I didn't know. Uh, is there a way so I can add him to the overview, so I know exactly who I need to work to, or is that like, like how to fix that? Um, did he want secondary, or was he saying oh, that yes, he had? Yes, yes. He. He wanted secondary, and I didn't know who he was because it was like forty people fleet, and I'm like, who, <laughs> like, who are you? Uh, so sometimes you just have to get. So tackle is usually the smallest ships. So sometimes you just have to pay attention to which small ships um, are closer to the enemies. Um, if you have your grass graphics up, you can see the warp scrambler effect. That's kind of the hard way. Really, the person should have said, uh, "Jinx has tackle, needs secondary, warp to Jinx." Okay, okay. So, so, so in in preparation for that, mm -hmm. uh, my my idea was that I in overview, uh, overview watch list, I set up the fleet commander, mm -hmm. and I mm -hmm. put o also the guys who are uh, first first scram, right? So when somebody from first scram, so I would have like the leader and and everybody who is uh, first scram. So whenever somebody from first scram uh, says, I would uh, be easier for me to like work, work to him. And that's a good idea. And uh, so tackle is also, it's, it used to be called hero tackle a lot of times because a lot of times you're going to die. And the the times that you don't, or, or sometimes you tackle the person, you, you scram them, which turns off their micro warp drive, that, that gives the fleet moments to get to you. Um, and then you die, and then but then the enemy dies. So tackle can sometimes feel a little frustrating because the ship is the... The ship is the ammunition, and so you have to get used to. It's not because you're bad that you died. It's just that's kind of what it was meant for. Once you get better, some people, not me, some people are are much much better at using transversal circling in and knowing which ships to avoid so that they don't die as often. Um, if you don't like dying and you want to stay around fleets longer, or particularly standing fleet, then. E War lets you be at extreme ranges and kind of be a fly on the wall around a fleet, and you're not going to get damaged. So then you can kind of just poke your head down. Um, you, if you're in a Griffin, I, I used to really like Griffins. You can jam an enemy if you jam their uh, logistics or space healers. Then that really um, hurts their fleet, and then they might even start targeting you, and you just warp off. So that that's your tank in a small ship. Your tank is warping off. I was told that tackle means uh, uh, I'm engaged in target. It does not mean he use scram. Uh, if some, if you scram him, you should say scram. Is that correct? That saying you got him tackled is fine, but scram scram is better than. Um, so disruptors have longer range, and uh, but that still prevents them from warping away. But if they're in a really so like a big, a big ship, if you have them scrammed or tackled, they're not getting away. In a small ship, if you have them scrammed, then they can't burn away from you really quickly and get out of it. So, so. that that's like, I would say that's like level two of tackle, <laughs> is being okay, able to identify between the two. I have that's a question. Awesome. Go for it, Anis. So, if I have a jump clone set up in high sec, I cannot set up at an impasse, right? Uh, if you're an alpha, you only get one jump clone. That's correct. Yeah, I'm an alpha. Okay. Right. So what are you going to high sec for? Uh, I don't know. I just started playing there, and then my friend told me to make a jump clone there before I go here to no sec, and I just have it there. I don't really need it. Okay, so um, one cool thing about high sec, it, in, if there was a particular system you always wanted to go back to, you might want that jump clone. But you can always mm -hmm. change your death clone to your school uh, for free anytime. So, okay. um, you do, but you have to remember to set a jump clone down in our space to leave it yeah, here, yeah, yeah. and so then you can jump back, and that's you can only jump back once a day. And then once you're back, you'd want to reset your death clone to down here. All right. Okay. Okay. Uh, so let me talk. If any other questions? Yeah. Uh, one last question. Sure. 
Um, what do the tags mean? Uh, on, wh- which ones? Uh, Mumble. On Mumble. I mean, SB00 November. What does that mean? That's uh, So that's spoon or noobs backwards for brave newbies. <laughs> so that's the, that's the corporation you're in. And then, oh. um, and so we also have um, drug free. What is what is your stand for? I forget what. Uh, I'm new. Hang on, let me check. Google. Legend Legends Unbound, and then we have. Yeah, that's it. And then we have PDE, which is uh, Jack Shira. Uh, Jackie Shira. Really sorry. Know. I don't really know. Pr- Presume dead in Enterprise. Yes, yes. I'm sorry. I'm I can't edit days old. In the game, total. So a lot of our allies also have, um, also have access. You end up, over time, you get, you start to know these, um, you get used to the tags. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, let me talk really quick about the. So we're an impasse now, but the the war I called it the war of local local aggression. That's Jinx's name. No one else's. So that is the simple farmers in SV5. Um, they have a constant camp there and have for years. They've anchored hundreds of structures or 100 structures, something ridiculous. And we're now at a place that we want to uh, try to get them out of there. It's, uh, it's really difficult. They're really high skilled players. They have a lot of accounts. Um, so they, and they also are Australian. So all their time zones are in Australian time zones. So the, the that war is going to put even though we're way more players, we a lot of us have one account. Uh, I do have more, but um, I would say the average brave newbie probably has uh, less than one account, and well, less than two accounts. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, and um, so we need we have to and, and we're lower SP, so we often have to have more people than them, more ships, and then be aware of their strategies. So a lot of the fights, some of the fights will be in, uh, if you're in USTZ, very early morning. For um, for Europe, it'd be mid-afternoon. We will do our very best. So they get to set the defensive timers. And so they're going to set them for our worst time zone and their best time zone. Uh, mm-hmm. If you want to get... <laughs> yeah, the Bravest Newbies plays with zero counts. Um, sometimes it is fun. Sometimes it's ridiculous to wake up that early or, or do something for Eve, but that's also when some of the <laughs> coolest things in Eve has, have happened. So if, you know, like tomorrow's timers are at 7 a.m. my time, uh, if I if I wake up early before work, I could probably give it an hour. I've had, sometimes that's really fun. Sometimes I'm like, why am I doing this for a video game? So, of course, in Brave, anything's optional. Do what's fun for you. Uh, one of the things that if you're not in those time zones, you can really help to participate is one thing that the game has done is if you know what an activity defense modifier is, which I'll, I'll show you in a second. Um, they've changed it so that if you are really living in your system, then other people can't anchor small structures. And that's that's been one of the hardest problems about them, uh, Simple Farmers, is they could just spam these structures that are very low ISK to them. And it's a pain. It's a real pain for us to remove. So now we're running what's called a ADM fleets or activity defense modifier fleets to secure the space so that they can't drop anymore. So if we kill them, they stay gone. Um, now they might, we might kill everything or not, because there's lots of them. But we're gonna try, and they might just move a, a few systems away to Kebers and then be flying in there. It's very difficult to remove that uh, determined body. In Eve, the only way to uh, win a war is just we keep we keep trying and they don't. So that, that's what we're trying to do. Um, so let's go over. Let me show you the activity defense modifier real quick. So if let's look at PZMA. So I linked it in Fleet. Hit sh- um, go ahead and hit show info on it. So or you can just click on it. If you go over to the Sovereignty tab, uh, so this is our, this is the capital of impasse for us. So it is extremely secure. So 6.0 is the maximum you can have activity defense model multiplier. That means if someone wanted to take our space, 
than the vulnerability windows and the amount of time that they would have to spend um, doing blinking on it now, but <laughs> doing the how you attack sovereignty um, would t entosis is what it's called um, would take they'd have to spend 60 minutes where they could hold it and we couldn't push them off of of that mini game. Um, so the the higher it is, the safer your system is. For some of the systems, if they're if they're below 4.1 then enemies can anchor small structures. So what we're trying to do is, particularly SV5, uh, we're running fleets in the afternoons to keep that above 4.1 so they can't anchor any more structures. So as we kill them, we'll be actually whittling them down and they can't just keep on spamming them. Um, now we have lots of systems that are below 4.1 so they can just move around, but SV5 is their favorite so that's where we're kind of concentrating right now. So as you consider where to rat or what activities you want to do in the game, if you see an ADM fleet, that's a way that you can bring a Vexer or something small or even a Venture and um, both killing. So th these are the PVE activity that you do in, in the system. Military index is killing rats or NPCs. Industry index is mining ore. So any of those activities in a system help secure it. And relics and data do 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 they do anything? What's that? Relics and data sites do no, they no, do anything? No. Uh, they don't unless they have rats. Even yeah, ice. Yeah. So like industry index is based on the M three mind, and ice is uh, much slower per M three. So it's like a half efficiency of just doing regular ore. So uh, those are some little things. And responding to pings, if you're not in Slack, that's where you're going to get um, that's where you're going to get noticed that fleets are going up. Sometimes they're low notification. Uh, you can also have uh, we also have a timer board, which I'll link in fleet. And looking at the timer board, I, I don't really do this, but if in advance you're like, hey, I'm thinking about playing Eve um, Friday but maybe if there's something Saturday morning maybe I'll not play Eve and wake up early Saturday morning so you can check the timer board and see that there are um, there could be an important timer in advance usually I let the FCs do that and they'll set out a print if it's important they'll set out, set it out send out a pre-ping and then you'll know to show up alright um, I'm gonna go ahead and end the stream but I'll stick around and answer some other questions Right. Thanks. Thank you, Jinx. Thank you. Thank you, Jinx. Thank you. Thanks.